Hi guys. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I had to put on my reaching hat. Hear me out. I've been insulted and degraded in ways that were unimaginable to me. All because they fear what I know as the truth. And I'm not alone. I know that there's thousands others that have experienced what I've experienced in the entertainment industry. I also know that there's peers of mine who know exactly what I'm talking about and know all the details, but have been afraid to come forward with their own truths. So it's pretty hard in my mind to think about these big flashlight photographs and everyone thinking they know me and talking about me, but having no idea the type of mistreatment that I was still dealing with at that time, that everyone around me saw and did nothing. Leo, as you know, is the latest, hottest, hunkiest teen idol there is. Yeah, his muscles. <laughs> Look, speaking of hunky, huh? Thank Leo, you. what's it like to be a teen idol? Uh, ask her Cameron, uh, I don't <laughs> I don't know about that teen thing. I mean, I think it's good. I think it's good for publicity, but... They don't, it's almost like they're not actors, you know what I mean? It's like they portray them as like sort of a piece of meat. <laughs> like, you know, here's the new cute thing. Take a look at him and go, ooh, ah. So I, I didn't dig that, no. Hey, this is Katie Rice. She is one of the young artists I was telling you about who sought me out because she grew up watching Ren and Snippy, right? Mm -hmm. Katie is the princess of sexy girl artists. I was at her 15th birthday party. Uh, we'll tell you that backstory a little bit later. Wood, who's been acting since he was eight, told the Sunday Times there are a lot of vipers in this industry, people who only have their own interests in mind. I've been led down dark paths to realize that these things probably are still happening. Um, so what would happen is that your parents would send you to sort of like this camp and you would be separate from your parents. Hello, this is Dan Schneider, AKA Dan Warp on Twitter. I'm here at Nickelodeon, where no open-toed shoes or sandals are allowed on stage. We're about to rehearse iCarly right now. But before we start our rehearsal, do you think that I would be able to attack every main cast member of iCarly and knock them to the ground? Do you dare me? Do you dare me? That only leaves Miranda. Miranda, you're the last cast member that I have not knocked to the ground. I did not knock you to the ground. May the fourth be with you in honor of our Star Wars. Done! Nickelodeon and Dan Schneider, the longtime producer and showrunner of hit kids TV shows like iCarly, Drake and Josh, and Victorious, are going their separate ways after a long partnership. He has helped launch the careers of Keenan Thompson, Amanda Bynes, Victoria Justice, Miranda Cosgrove, Jeanette McCurdy, and others. The network ended its relationship with Schneider after almost 25 years, and Deadline reported that the move happened as Schneider was, quote, under a cloud of suspicion over the treatment of some younger stars of his shows. Dan Schneider. I know you're watching my vine. Do you like my vine? Vine. Vine! Vine! Look what you've done to me. <laughs> I need to be able to see. Um, I don't like, I don't like Dan personally. And then tell me about the experience when you were taken into the boardroom at Nickelodeon. 
So, well, let me rewind a little bit because I want to get to Dan. Okay. According to anonymous industry sources who spoke to Page Six, Schneider took a $7 million payout to leave. This comes as Deadline reports that Schneider would tweet photos of the feet of his young female stars. Page Six also points to more strange social media behavior, noting his habit of posting seemingly inappropriate videos of his actresses, including one of Ariana Grande in a revealing outfit dousing herself with water. and claim that Schneider was the real father of Jamie Lynn Spears' child born in 2007. I get to, I can put them in any horrible predicament I choose. Darn that I have a good time. <laughs>
he would talk to their parents and, and let them know that this was an amazing opportunity for them in their career. Then he would invite them to come work with him and then it would get worse and he would do things with them. And like that one girl where he actually, she was like a full blown girlfriend living with him and everybody knew. And that's another aspect is that you're going to see here, which is the most frustrating, is the amount of people that know and turn a blind eye. It's very frustrating to see how many people turn a blind eye to what's happening to these children in Hollywood. Let's talk about Robin Bird. Robin Bird was the girlfriend who became his live-in girlfriend at 16, but he actually met her and did things with her when she was just 14. And the way he met her in the beginning, there was already a huge power dynamic because she had written to him and he had come to visit her after they were talking for a while in her trailer park in Arizona. Now keep in mind, right? He is this major guy from Hollywood. He's, you know, the head of her favorite show. She wants to be a cartoonist. He's going to give her this opportunity and she's living in a trailer park. So already there is a power balance and she's 14. He's 39, by the way gag so when he went over there and spoke to her first of all they actually had intercourse when she was 14 years old and then he managed to convince her mother who probably was also you know financially maybe desperate maybe and he had convinced her that this was this amazing opportunity for her daughter and she allowed her daughter to go to Los Angeles to work and live. I don't know if she knew that, you know, her daughter was living with him, but for sure she knew that she was going to work with John Kay to be a cartoonist. So now Robin is 16 years old. She's working as a cartoonist, or I think she's interning, sorry. She's interning as a cartoonist for John Kay, and she is not happy because he is mistreating her. He is making her feel like a piece of meat. And, you know, there are other interns there, men who are a little bit older than her, who remember her crying all the time. And then he would tell her it was inappropriate to cry. And she started to vent to herself, like in a diary, or she would write letters to herself. And in one of these letters, she said, quote, he may like my figure and face, he may adore my mind and ideas, but he does not have regard for my feelings as I do his. And then there are some more disturbing accounts of other people who worked for John Kay, who saw inappropriate things between him and Robin Bird. The first is an image that was left out on the desk, and it was a drawing that John Kay had made of Bird and a dog um, relieving himself and not urine the other way, use your imagination, on her. And it was a very graphic picture and he just left it out. And they saw it, they made the connection, they didn't do anything. But it gets even worse because, you know, they lived together and he would have these parties. And in these parties, she would drink and he would drink and they would get drunk. And it was at that moment during these times that John Kay would grab some of these guys, it happened to two different guys, and he would show them awful pictures that he took of Robin performing acts. And they also mentioned how at these parties, sometimes she was so drunk that she seemed to be in and out of consciousness as well. And then when these interviewers asked Robin if she remembered any of this she she had no memory of being that inebriated she also had no memory of these photographs but i'll read you some quotes of these men who again didn't do anything what they said happened at these parties so the first one is an intern and he says that when robin was so drunk she was drifting in and out of consciousness john k called him over quote and then he pulled out these polaroids of robin basically how can you say it going down on him, he's like, what do you think of that? And he claims, you know, he didn't say anything, he didn't confront her and oh, it was awful and that's it. The other guy said this, at a party at his house, John Kay showed him, quote, a stack of Polaroids of him and Robin having sex. He never mentioned the photographs to Robin, nor did he confront Jan John Kay about the interaction. During another party, another guy said this. 
John Kay had pulled out a binder of photographs of him and Robin, quote, it was gross. He said, he was like, oh, you like that? And I was like, no, but he didn't do anything about it. Although I will say one of these guys regrets not doing anything about it. And that's why he actually spoke to media for this interview. And he said that, you know, he feels so bad that he didn't do anything about it, but he's trying to fix that by talking to the media now saying that like me talking to you guys right now is the least I could do. So at least there's that, you know, better late than never. So Robin says that she was feeling very neglected and mistreated by John. And so she decided to leave for a little bit and she did so by taking jobs at other studios. She left for a little bit, but she came back. And when she came back, she was shocked to find another young girl. I went and worked at a couple other studios because I just needed to have my space. And when I came back, Katie Rice was there. Hey, this is Katie Rice. She is one of the young artists I was telling you about who sought me out because she grew up watching Ren and Stimpy, right? Mm hmm So, um, uh, Ren and Stimpy has a lot of uh, specialists on it. Like we have people who draw manly, we have people who draw uh, sensitive, we have people who draw sexy girls. Katie is the princess of sexy girl artists. Now I gotta tell you a little history because um, all through the 80s, when I was working at Hanna-Barbera and Filmation and all these uh, studios, I always wanted to draw sexy girls into the cartoons. But since the networks were all run by, um, by dykes, they wouldn't let you because they thought it was offensive to women to draw girls cute, like Katie here. So um, it frustrated me and all the other artists that like to draw sexy girls. So when Ren and Stimpy came along, I managed to get a couple of scenes, like in Powder Toast Man, uh, what's the name of the girl, the lovely assistant in Powder Toast Man? Mm -hmm. Now, Katie used to watch these cartoons, and uh, didn't that crap inspire you or something? Yes, I love the girls. I like the uh, those uh, Lynn Naylor girls, too, in uh, Stimpy's Big Day. Yeah, those were great. And uh, I think Katie showed me one time. She drew, uh, I was at her 15th birthday party. Uh, we'll tell you that backstory a little bit later. And um, she showed me her sketchbook, and one of the drawings in it was a drawing, a copy of a drawing I did of my character, Sody Pop. You still have that drawing? Yes, <laughs> it's not very good. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty cool. Anyway, she is now, as far as I know, the best artist in the business at doing uh, sexy girls. Draw the goddamn nipples! So we did, and Katie did, and uh, all the guys that had to follow up on her scenes spent a lot of time in the bathroom, let me tell you. So Katie was groomed in the same way that Robin was groomed. She had written in to the show, again, as a fan, and then, you know, she started talking to John and then the conversations would become icky again and then he would promise her opportunities. She was 14 at the time and then eventually he came to visit her. He went to her 15th birthday party. He even admits it himself. He somehow, you know, kind of talks to the parents and convinces them that, you know, their child coming to work for him is somehow this great opportunity. And before you know it, long story short, Katie is now working for him in his studio in the same exact way that Robin was. So Robin comes back, she sees Katie, that she's been replaced essentially, and that's when she decides, I want nothing to do with this, and Robin leaves. And then, you know, as she grows up, she realizes what happened to her and it was so messed up and everything like that. So now going back to Katie, Katie is still there. And this is what Katie had to say about the inappropriate things that John Kay did with her. Quote, I want to squeeze you. I'm crazy about you, Katie. Do I ever make you tingle? Ew. And this was in an email that she printed and saved a few days after she turned 15. He was 41 years old at the time. Quote, I'm thinking about you very hard right now and I have a little tickle in my chest. Now this next thing is extremely graphic and I'm gonna try not to say the whole thing but it is, I'm warning you, it's, it's nasty, okay? So, quote, she remembers several late night phone calls during which Crick Falusi said, quote, repeat after me, John's D slides in my pussy quote, I mean, sorry, in parentheses, his pronunciation of the word, 
while he masturbated on the other end of the line. She refused and Katie Rice, who was naive about sex, said she didn't realize what he was doing at first until all of a sudden she did. The articles that I got this information from, the reporters who were writing these articles said that they were able to corroborate all of these claims by looking at AOL messages, emails, and letters, and as well as the witnesses who corroborated the story, although they didn't do anything about it at the time. But at least they were able to confirm these claims, I think that that's, that's a good thing that they did. These reporters, they reached out to Nickelodeon to try to get a comment and Nickelodeon declined to comment, of course. <laughs> but there's more, of course there is. There was a Nickelodeon productions assistant called Jason Michael Handy. And in his own private journal, Jason Michael Handy described himself in his own words as quote, a pedophile, comma, full-blown, period. Now remember Mr. Handy for later. He's gonna come up again. So let's talk about him a little bit because he also worked at a church and he was mainly working around six-year-olds. Then he also worked obviously for Nickelodeon and he did a lot more things over there. First of all, he had access to the kids, which was exchange emails and telephone numbers with these kids and then he would then contact them inappropriately and then he would groom them with false promises of, of career opportunities. He was actually sentenced to six years in prison after pleading no context, contest in 2004 to two felony counts, one of lewd acts on a child and one of distributing sexually explicit material by email and to a misdemeanor charge related to child sexual exploitation. This is what he would do. First, he would lure, uh, he lured a 14 year old girl through the internet with the promise of a television career. And then he flew to Michigan to meet her and he would meet up with her at her middle school and engage in quote, inappropriate acts. Then there was testimony from a child that revealed that during a taping of the TV show Cousin Skeeter, he had befriended a nine-year-old girl and then began visiting her at her home. On one occasion while playing video games in her bedroom, he repeatedly kissed her. And this is, she said this to the court. Where are the parents? Why are they allowing this grown man to be in her room alone with her playing video games? Like what? what? Anyway, also he emailed naked photos of himself to an 11 year old child that he met on the set of the Amanda show. Now, I'm gonna get into the Amanda show and Amanda Bynes and Dan Schneider and all of that because that is insanity. But for now, I just want you to remember handy guy. So as if one productions assistant or PA uh, isn't bad enough, for him to be a perv, um, there was another one, also worked on Nickelodeon, also was convicted of horrible things. His name is Ezel or Ezel, Ethan Channel. I'll just refer to him as Ethan Channel. And he was a production assistant on the Nickelodeon Animation Studio. And he used his access to that studio to groom kids, okay? So he was arrested for inappropriately touching a 14 year old boy at the Nickelode Nickelodeon studio because that's what he would do. He would tell them, you know, I can take you to the studio. Don't you want to see the Nickelodeon studio? And obviously these kids who love Nickelodeon are like, yeah, that's great. And then he would do things to the kids. <clears throat> okay. So the kid, the boy in question here, he said that Ethan Channel was, quote, a weird character, but he thought that visiting the studio was very cool. So on a Sunday in November 2005, Ethan Channel picked up this boy from his house to take him to the studio, which again, the parents, I don't know why parents are so comfortable leaving their children. I mean, I don't know about parents in general, but these parents are, in my opinion, my opinion, too comfortable leaving their kids with strangers, especially in the Hollywood scene, but I don't know, I'm a very skeptical person, so I would never. So this is what the kid said in the court testimony. Uh, that channel asked him to watch an adult film. 
you know what I mean? That kind of film. And the, the boy didn't want to. And then Ethan Channel got pissed and like groped him. He told me not to tell, not to ever say anything to anybody or he would be arrested and get in a lot of trouble. And then the boy was very upset and then he just like dropped him off home and then the boy told his mom and then, you know, that's when the case started and he was charged and everything like that. There's even more. Okay, I would say, you know, grab a snack or whatever, but uh, I think we've all lost our appetites, so let's carry on. Martin Weiss. Martin Weiss highlights, in my opinion, uh, how pervasive this issue is in Hollywood because he's not a production assistant, he's not a show creator, he's a talent agent. So it is really disturbing when you think about it because you've got these kids, right? And if they're going through this, who do they have to turn to? Their agent is in on it. You know, the PAs are in on it. The creators are in on it. Their parents, uh, they're turning a blind eye or they're willfully ignorant or they're just so oblivious because they want the money. It is just so pervasive and it's in so many different aspects of the industry. So let's talk about Martin Weiss. So he was arrested in November after a victim and former client of his came forward. This former client and victim said that they were, I don't even know the word, abused over a three year period between 30 to 40 times. And to make matters even worse, when police got a search warrant and they went into his house and they searched around, the amount of things that they found there justified them putting a way higher bail than usual for that type of crime because just from the evidence they found, they were sure that there was a lot more victims. This is the part that gets me really angry. And I try, I try not to get emotional when I do these videos because like every crime is horrible and every victim matters. Um, but for me, this type of, this topic hits very close to home. I'm just gonna say that. And I just get so angry when, um, when they get off because that happens way too much and it's not okay, okay? I need it, hold on, let me just compose myself. What a, this is gonna be a shit show, I can already tell. He got a year, one year, and five years probation and he didn't even have to serve the whole year. His sentence was suspended for time served and he was released soon after. Okay? He is now a registered sex offender and he can't uh, be around kids that are under the age of 18 unsupervised. But you know who can? And who's also a registered offender? A man by the name of Brian Peck. And we really need to talk about Brian Peck. Brian Peck is affiliated with Nickelodeon, very closely affiliated with Dan Schneider, was on all the shows with all the kids, and he was the guy, the creepy guy, in the clip I showed in the beginning with Leonardo DiCaprio. I know we can show him what? our little drawings. Show us little drawings. Oh, the you little see drawings. We draw drawings of each other. Brian is the famous artist, and we always make fun of each other and portray each other in silly, satirical ways. Leo's job on this set, for some reason, is to make fun of me all day long. Okay, so here we have Robert De Niro. Leo, as you know, is the latest, hottest, hunkiest teen idol there is. Yeah, his <laughs> muscles. Look, speaking of hunky, huh? Okay. Leo, what's it like to be a teen idol? Oh, uh, ask her Cameron. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> And even though he was convicted, he is still working with kids till today in Hollywood. Okay, I found an article from 2002 which talks about a comedy boot camp that Brian Peck and Dan Schneider ran together. And it's a very controversial camp because weird things happened at this camp. So this is an article from 2002 by the LA Times and it's titled, Groomed to be all that. 
find it very interesting, the choice of words there. Very, very, very prophetic. Schneider said he believed that all that, which debuted in 1994, had grown tired in recent seasons. He and network executives agreed to start fresh with an all-new cast and new sketches for the season, which was launched in January. The new cast started with a two-week comedy boot camp that Schneider held with help of a team that included the show's dialogue coach, Brian Peck. So there is a YouTube channel called Revenge of the Sis. Okay, and they're all over this Dan Schneider, Brian Peck thing. They interviewed a girl who was at the camp. In 2007, my agent um, contacted me and my family about um, possibly getting a good Nickelodeon gig. How old were you at the time? So, um, this was, I was probably around 15, 15 14 years old. Uh, okay, go ahead. And Dan Schneider's next show was iCarly. So they were looking for, you know, extras or possibly like a lead type of role. And we um, flew out to L.A. Uh, for this audition. And when we got there, it was um, a bunch of kids, probably like 200 kids. Um, and then these random agents hand selected specific kids. We were then told um, to take off our shoes and that we were each going to go into a room to show the producer, who is Dan Schneider, um, the, the tapes to see who you would want on the show. And, um, of course, you know, we always ask, like, oh, what do we have to do? Like, what would you like us to be doing once we're in there? He's like, you got to just take off your shoes, just, like, run around in front of the camera, you know, talk about how much you love being barefoot. So what would happen is that your parents would send you to sort of, like, this camp, and you would be separate from your parents, it was an opportunity for the kids to get discovered. And interestingly enough, most of the kids got discovered by the pool. There was a, they had a pool, they had like tennis courts. And I believe like it was like Megan Fox and um, other female celebrities. And Hillary Duff was another one mm -hmm. who got discovered there at the pool. And they would push you to do pool activities because they said, that's where you, you have the highest chance of getting discovered. So now Brian Peck has been convicted of lewd acts against minors. Okay, these are the charges. Brian Peck was found guilty of two counts, lewd acts against a child and oral copulation of a minor. And after Peck was done doing his time, he was welcomed into Hollywood with open arms. And why do I say that? Because according to IMDb, two years after he got out, he was still a registered sex offender and he was working on the TV show, The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, which if you guys don't know, it's a kid's show. Mm. Sorry, I just, it's just the rage, the rage, the rage of it all. The, just, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, so now I want to talk about Dan Schneider, okay? A lot of people are talking about Dan Schneider, and for good reason. Why? Because everyone that I mentioned up until now has been convicted, has been charged, or has admitted guilt. Dan Schneider, none of that has happened. Nobody has come out to accuse him, which I think is noteworthy, and we'll go over all the things that are suspicious and you can decide for yourself if you think there's something off with Dan Schneider. The only thing that reignited all of the talk, because there's been talk for a while, is when Nickelodeon let him go. They gave him like $7 million. They ended up their relationship with him and the rumors all started swirling again and everybody was talking about like, because it happened around the Me Too movement, remember? It happened around that time. And if you remember with Harvey Weinstein, nobody was saying anything. It was rumors. It was this. You've got NDAs, hush money, all these big wigs, you know. So just because nobody has come out yet doesn't mean they're not going to. Doesn't mean it's not happening. Again, my conspiracy allegedly, please don't sue me. I, do, I don't have Hollywood money. So Deadline was the first news outlet to report about, you know, Nickelodeon parting ways with Dan Schneider. And in that article, they mentioned the controversy surrounding Dan. And I want to read you some of those quotes. Okay, first of all, too, I want to say that, you know, 
in during the separation like the statements from Nickelodeon and Dan and everybody was very much like oh you know the shows ran their course this has been a wonderful partnership we love you blah, blah. nothing negative this is what the journalist says in that article he says among other things I hear there had been multiple complaints of abusive behavior against Schneider filed by members of his staff for years, Schneider had been under a cloud of suspicion over the treatment of some younger stars of his shows. Among the things that have raised eyebrows are his tweeted photos of the toes of his young female stars. And so now let's talk about Dan's foot fetish, which I never thought that I would be talking about a foot fetish on my channel, but here we are. What a time to be alive. Let's talk about it. So according to insiders, Dan's nickname is actually Dan, show me your toes, I'll put you in my shows, Schneider. And a lot of these rumors come from, first of all, you guys heard about the weird stuff in, in the video about the camp and, and the toes, but also his tweets and just straight up the things on the shows that he creates. In, out, the, in, out, in, out. After this, we massage my feet. No, gross. Come on, work the heel, rub it like a man. David, I hired him to read the book to me. Okay, on three, I'm gonna... Just do it! Alright. There we go. Spread your toes, spread your toes, girl. Yeah, my hand's starting to get palm cramps. Fine, take a break. <sighs> Puppy, do something! No, 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 with toxins and bacteria. But feel our feet. <laughs> yes, I realize that they can nibble away all of the... Wow, they're really soft. <laughs> Nurses, feel these kids' feet. Everyone. Okay, so let's talk about some of those tweets because some of them I was able to find in screenshot, others I was not. I just found an article referencing him, referencing him, referencing them with a... Um, like a link and then when I go to click on the link tweet deleted or account suspended wonder why so here's a tweet from May 19th 2010 where Schneider's tweets toes similar to fingers but not nearly as good who agrees this was the one that got a lot of controversy there's a TV show called Sam and Cat there was a weird tweet from the official like Twitter page Sam and Cat tomorrow, right on the bottom of your foot, take a pic and use hashtag Sam and Cat Saturday. We'll retweet and follow until our fingers get sore. And unfortunately, there were kids who did it and posted their pictures of their feet. Then there's another tweet from Dan's account where he says, pick Carly tickles Sam's very unusual toes. If you have a moment, will you please name Sam's toes for us? And there was another tweet, which is disgusting, and he has deleted that tweet. And this is what it says. Filming Victorious, editing iCarly, drinking Diet Dr. Pepper, looking at lotion bottle, contemplating moisturizing my hands. And some people read into it um i'm not sure if that is something you guys read into as well or not but there is a connotation 
with that, let's say that may, oh, I don't know, maybe we're reading too much into it. What do you guys think? I'd love to know. <sighs> Former actresses have said things about Dan that are not very favorable. They have not come out right and actually accused him of anything, although they allude to it, but it seems like they're afraid to, to go that far. But I'll read you what some of them have said. The first one is Lori Beth Denberg, and I was a big fan of hers. She was on all that. Quote, he's not my favorite person. He is not a pleasant person to work for, and I'm not confirming anything, but I'm not disappointed he won't be darkening the doors of any more people working for him. And it's not just kids, it's anybody. Then there was another actress called Alexa Nicholas, and she... She had a lot to say. She was on the show Zoe 101, which was the show with Britney Spears' younger sister, Jamie Lynn Spears, and we're going to talk about her too, and the insane rumors about her. And anyway, so on this show, she was talking about, you know, her experience. She went on Instagram Live. She also made a post on her Instagram where she showed all of the men that I had talked about from Nickelodeon and it was like the Nickelodeon creep club. And then she went on live and she talked about her experience there. And mostly she was talking about being bullied by the other girls, but also she mentioned Dan. And my mom was like, can you please get Dan? Get Dan here immediately, get the producers here immediately. Someone needs to figure out what just happened to my daughter. So then finally Dan walks in. And Dan has not helped the entire time. And I don't feel comfortable going into details about what I've seen with Dan or like what Dan is. I don't like, I don't like Dan personally. I don't feel comfortable going into details about what I've seen with Dan or what Dan is. What Dan is. To me, she's referring to Dan being, you know, the P word that rhymes with chamomile. Benefile. Okay, so the next actress I want to talk about is Ariana Grande because there have been a lot of clips Sentence number three. Ah! I'm soaking wet! Quick, somebody bring me the ocean! Have you ever tried to get your whole big toe in your mouth? Check this out. Sometimes I wonder if you can get juice from a potato. for a teenage girl to drink water upside down? Mmm, I'm thirsty! <laughs> it's not possible! <laughs> and stop giggling, take four. Okay, what did the young shrimp say when his mom asked him why he wouldn't share any of his toys? I know, no, no. no. No, that sounded like this. It, 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 it sounded like, Okay, what did the young shrimp say when his mom said he wasn't charity of his toys? <laughs> Try it again. The interesting thing about her is she has not talked about it at all. Let's talk about Jeanette McCurdy because, okay. She is the one in the clip where her makeup is smeared and she's like, Dan Schneider, what have you done to me? Hey, Dan Schneider, I know you're watching my Vine. Do you like my Vine? Vine. 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 Look what you've done to me. So, I want to show a clip of Ariana Grande and another actress who's not Jeanette, but they're on set and they seem to be having a good time and they're laughing and they're like on the floor and then as soon as they see Dan approaching, Dan is the guy filming the video in this clip. As soon as they see him coming, they like immediately the energy shifts, they get up, they're like covering themselves up. She's like putting her hair in front of her chest. She's pulling her skirt down and their expressions change. But what I want you guys to notice is the different ways in which these two actresses react. Ariana is like joking and overly laughing and overly joking and things are fine and things are normal and that's her way of coping. 
The other girl is like shocked. You can look at her face and her whole expression changes. She looks terrified. And then she seems to get upset with Ariana for like acting like that and then kind of storms off. It's so weird. Watch. That was amazing. <laughs> that was one of the better things I've ever heard. Hey! Hi, what's going on here? Nothing. You didn't cut out that part. Why are you sitting on the floor of the set? Because we are. They are. <laughs> did you just bark? No. No, oh, I did not. It must be the, the set ghost. Who barked? The set of Ghost Christmas Past. That was really scary. Did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> it's the Christmas ghost. It's the ghost of Christmas past. Oh, God. Here we go. All right, you want to sit on the floor? I sat on the floor. <gasps> Yesterday I sat on the floor and I was like, oh, and this was like, it just got down in a really manly way, but like, not on purpose. She was like, and she was like, oh. <laughs> Everything is a show. I mean, am I hallucinating or, or did that is that what you guys saw too? I don't know. Tell me how you guys interpreted that, because that's very much open to interpretation. But the next thing I want to talk about with Dan Schneider is the leeway that he had with Nickelodeon. And it was so shocking and so abnormal that there was an article written about how much leeway he had and how not typical that was. The article is called Tween on the Screen. Six or eight hip, pretty, very nervous looking girls, somewhere around 14 years of age, though it's possible they only look that old, were perched on couches in the splashy lobby of Nickelodeon's New York production offices, high above Times Square. The girls were there to audition, but they weren't holding scripts because they were not auditioning for anything in particular. Quote, we're seeing kids all the time, Paula Kaplan, Kaplan, senior vice president of talent and Nickelodeon told me, even when we don't have a show to cast, we're meeting kids on a regular basis, just bringing them in just to see who they are. Just weird. Nick's next big sitcom had only one or two actors cast, no writing staff, no title, no pilot episode, not even a script for a pilot episode, not even an outline of one. In spite of which, Nick's head of development and original programming, Marjorie Cohn, told me the network had already committed not only to producing 13 episodes of this hypothetical show, but also to begin broadcasting the, those episodes in the fall of 2007. At first, I thought I must have heard this wrong. 13 episodes of a concept? Nickelodeon is part of Viacom, after all. And Viacom does not do business in this improvisator improvisatory fashion. Not to mention that the success of the Disney Channel was making Nick's demographic more of a battleground than ever. Where were the poll results, the Q ratings, the meetings full of mid-level executives? How was it possible that a network that has led its particular niche of the entertainment industry for the last 12 years, the highest rated network on cable TV, period, could have already scheduled a season's worth of a show that no one there seemed to know the first thing about? When I put the question to Cohn, she turned to look at an associate and together they shrugged, unperturbed. Then. She looked back at me and said simply, it's Dan. Dan is Dan Schneider, creator of three of Nick's most successful series, Drake and Josh, Zoe 101, and The Amanda Show. There's an element of magic to it. And so when you find a grown up like Schneider with the requisite mojo, you pretty much let him do whatever he wants. And then I found another article which was also talking about how much leeway he had and they even have a quote from Dan himself admitting to just that. He has the kind of control over his shows that he knows would be hard to command anywhere else. There are very few people in the entertainment business who have the level of creative control that I do, Schneider told Variety. Nickelodeon has always been generous in giving me a lot of latitude. Putting it mildly. 
And now I want to talk about payouts and predictions because first of all, there have been a lot of rumors that the reason why you haven't heard anything about Dan Schneider is that Viacom, which is Nickelodeon's parent company, does these huge payouts to these kids, basically hush money. And of course we know they can afford to do that. The other thing, which is the predictions, it's very, very strange. And at first when I heard about this on other videos and I was doing research about it, I was like, I don't know if I want to put this in. It seems kind of like not reliable, but then I found something that I hadn't seen in other videos that, that gave it a bit of credence. So I'm going to include it, even though it's, let me just tell you what it is. Okay. So, there is this blog called Crazy Days and Nights, and it's this anonymous blog that is supposedly run by an entertainment lawyer. Some of these posts were claiming certain things at the time, nobody knew about them. And then a, a short while later, the truth came out and what they said was true. And these allegations are concerning Dan Schneider, Amanda Bynes, and that crazy rumor about Jamie Lynn Spears, Britney Spears' little sister who remembers she was on that show, Zoe 101, and then she got pregnant at 16. She had to leave the show, and there were rumors that Dan was the father, and barf, barf, barf. But let's go back to the blog, and we'll go by it one by one, okay? And this is regarding Jamie Lynn's pregnancy. So this was posted on October 5th, 2007. Sorry, my dog's barking. I don't even know how you define what list someone is when there are some ensemble show watched by teens and preteens. So go above and make her a female. Make her pregnant, which is causing the producers to have a heart attack because they really don't need any more scandals. But wait, there's more. One of the producers who is old enough to be her grandfather shouldn't be having a heart attack because of shock, because he is the one who knocked her up. New boyfriends are being lined up as we speak. Two months after this post is when Jamie Lynn announced her pregnancy. And so officially the father is, I think, Casey Aldridge or something. And maybe he is the father. I don't know. Some people say he was paid to say that and it's actually Dan. But of course, this is a rumor. There's no, I don't have any proof. I'm just telling you what I found. And of course, you guys can decide for yourself. But me personally, I don't think that's a coinky dink and it's extremely depressing and I don't know why I'm smiling. I don't, this is, this is how I cope with drama. I'm not saying the coping skills are good. I'm just saying they, that's what they are. So there are more posts. So this is a post that was posted in 2019, June, and it's tagged with the name Dan Schneider. And this is what it reads. It says, I had a very brief, almost in passing conversation with this former A minus B plus list actress who at one time everyone in the country knew. She's been acting since she was a teen and has a brand new show which has ads everywhere. She was on her way to an interview and was about to get into a car when we spotted each other. Quick hug and asked her if she knew anything new about one of the, her former co-stars turned producer and his plans or one of her other former co-stars and his plans. She said to go ask a mutual friend about well-worn and to use those exact words. With that, she was gone. So I reached out to this mutual friend who I hadn't known had a connection to either of the former co-stars of the actress. The mutual friend didn't, but had a roommate who was hired on a fairly frequent basis by the more well-known former co-star to meet at hotel suites or production offices where she would engage in various activities designed to arouse someone with a foot fetish until that person re sorry until that person reached completion so to speak invariably many of these were filmed but not showing any faces she asked about them and it turns out that this actor turned producer said he had a collection of hundreds of scenes including many actresses who worked with him and that he had joined forces with this A-list director who had a similar collection to work on editing, to, editing them together into a three hour video. And the post is tagged Robin Givens, Dan Schneider, Quentin Tarantino. 
Now, Dan Schneider, by the way, was an actor before he became a producer. And we know about his foot fetish. So, and that leads me to the next post, which also leads me to Amanda Bynes. Because, as you guys know, Amanda Bynes had a very, very public breakdown. She, probably one of the craziest breakdowns I've ever seen a child star have. And now people are saying it has to do with Dan. Because she was on the show all that. He discovered her. Then he gave her that spinoff the Amanda show and he was in charge of that then she even had other shows that he was in charge of you know that movie Big Fat Liar again a childhood movie that I like that's now ruined Dan Schneider was the producer or director of that movie and she was that was like her big breakout and then the TV show that she was on I think I said TV show uh, what I like about you Dan was also in charge of that show so she was indebted to him, beholden to him in all these shows. All this, her career was intertwined with him. And there's a post that came out on this blog the day after it was announced. So this was in 2018 when it was announced that Nickelodeon was parting ways with Dan Schneider. This post appeared on the blog and the blogger claimed that this was a message they had gotten from Amanda Bynes. This is what it says. Thank you for all your ongoing support. I don't know how any of these men sleep at night, but if there's one thing that I do know, it's that what's done in the dark always comes to light. XOXO, sorry, I thought it was clever. Unforch, I will, I think that's short for unfortunately. I will obviously not be making any comment whatsoever for obvious reasons and unfortunately I feel as though the only way that legitimate stories can make the headlines regarding blank is if others publicly speak on his behavior. Blank was truly like a second father to me but things have changed. After the second incident I don't know if I'll ever be able to have children or have the family of my dreams. Which that last part I don't know what that means. But people noticed that there was a weird capitalization in the message. And then when they took each letter that was capitalized, it spelled out Dan did it, which is like the most conspiracy thing I've ever seen. But I thought I would mention it. Do you know who else she was around in her time with Nickelodeon? Brian Peck and both of the production assistants that I told you about that were convicted of these lewd acts with a child. She was exposed to all four, four of those men throughout her career. So I think it's very interesting and I think we should consider that when we look at where she is now, what happened to her because she's now under a conservatorship in the same way that Britney Spears is under a conservatorship because Hollywood messes with these people like no other and when you're a kid it's hard enough as an adult but as a kid I'm getting excited again the next thing I want to talk about is the innuendos and inappropriate jokes that are in Dan's kids shows and these are shows that were later in his career where he had a lot more leeway, a lot more prestige and standing within Nickelodeon. So maybe he felt more comfortable. I was going to read some of them too, but the, the sheer amount. I had to do a screen recording, which I'll show you now. And it, 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 it's just so many of these innuendos. He just scrolling through the, the episodes that have them, let alone going through all of the things i mean if you just search you know tv show victorious innuendo it'll get you to the page and you can read them for yourself there's just so many and they're just so gross what do you guys think about dan schneider do you think that this is a misunderstanding and he's just being playful and we're reading too much into it or do you think he's weird and gross and should not be anywhere near kids what do you think he did get that seven million dollar payout when they, you know, parted ways. So, you know, he's gonna be fine. But anyway, um, let me know what you guys think. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, don't, don't send your kids to Hollywood unsupervised.